Hey there, YouTube! Happy Monday! Welcome back to Sketchbook Habit Day 16. And today, I am using my most expensive art supplies. The art supplies that I have been tucking away for a rainy day or just kind of a I'm not ready for this or not good enough. You know, we all have that that particular art supply that we just don't use because for many silly reasons. So in my Instagram stories yesterday, I asked my followers what they would like to see in upcoming sketchbook habit videos and I got this really cool suggestion about using the good stuff, the most expensive stuff, and uh, many of you requested one of my uh, expensive palettes, the uh, Shmika that I haven't used. Um, <laughs> and I thought this was a great idea, especially for today, because we are halfway through the challenge, uh, 16 days, this is a 30 day total challenge and you know, we, can, we should celebrate. I should uh, pat myself on the back. I didn't skip a day yet. Um, I'm going strong and um, wow, we are, we are doing this. All right, so I'm finally cracking open the perfect sketchbook. I have squirreled away the sketchbook in my drawer. I purchased this back in 2017. It was limited edition of 900 copies. Um, I purchased this for 50 US dollars. It's no longer available. Um, even within this edition, I think uh, since then, the Perfect Sketchbook teamed up with Etcher and they made their own version and I don't know how that is. I think they may be different or the same. Not sure. But yes, so I'm using the $50 sketchbook, the Schmika 24 pan that I purchased on Jackson's Art Supplies for $107 on Super Sale. And, um, oh man, everyone talks about this palette, like hypes it up and I just like, I need to give it a shot. And um, I'm not gonna say how it went just yet. So I also went through all of my watercolor brushes looking for the most expensive one and uh, my most expensive brushes are actually were actually gifted to me and I'm excluding it from this particular video today because I want to use art supplies that I purchased myself and um, yeah, I hope you guys are cool with that. So about a year or two ago, I picked up this super expensive Escoda travel round brush in a size 6. Um, I think, I actually don't know how much I purchased this for, but at this moment it is retailed for about 40 to 45 US dollars and I'm like, wow, I spent that much <laughs> and I didn't use it. Oh man, uh, the silly things that I do. So yes, um, in grand total, it's about 200 US dollars of all the art supplies that I'm using in this video today, but I'm also tacking on the, the silver black velvet watercolor brushes since I only have one of the Escoda and I need multiple sizes. Um, these are probably my most expensive a synthetic blend with natural bristles. So to be honest, I really don't know if they are my most expensive. I did a lot of price researching today and it really does depend on where you go in terms of like vendors like Plaza, Jerry's, Amazon, Dick Blick. It just really does depend when you shop there because they kind of rotate the sales. So just be mindful. Also, another thing I want to point out is I noticed that art supplies are a little bit more expensive than they usually are. And if you're in the market to buy something new, I would suggest maybe to hold out until things kind of calm down for a bit. So I thought the best way to celebrate using my fancy art supplies was to do a patron portrait. I woke up this morning and felt the urge to just draw one of my patrons and uh, here I am. <laughs> so today I am drawing um, Nev. She is so sweet. Thank you so much for submitting a photo for me to draw. I am over the moon. I hope you continue to submit more photos so I can draw from and uh, she is so sweet. Like this just like adds to my day of making it extra special. Okie dokie. So this is where things get real in today's video. Today did not go as planned. I messed up. I dropped the ball. I had a moment. Um, so I'm going to break down exactly what went wrong so you don't repeat my mistakes. Um, so let's start from the beginning. I entered today's painting session full of enthusiasm. I love the reference photo. I love the model. Like I am spoiled to have her as my patron. I was just so hyped to get to the painting that I looked at my new watercolor palette and I was like, nah, I don't need to swatch this. Like, uh, I, I know what I have. Um, so I actually swatched and filmed an unboxing that never made it to YouTube. 
um, I think a month or two or last year ago. And with that in mind, I kind of just felt like I knew what I had and dove straight into the painting. Um, of course, I did a few little color mixtures on the side of a few skin tone mixes and I was like, solid, this looks great, let's keep going. Like what could possibly go wrong? And this is lesson number one. Quality art supplies does not equal good art. Like fancy art supplies will not make you a better artist. And this video is the complete example of that. Like I had all these bougie art supplies and I butchered it. So what went wrong? I didn't check what colors I had. I didn't check the pigments. I didn't check the opacity. I just blindly trusted everything will be fine because what could go wrong with fancy art supplies? And as I was layering up my washes of color, I noticed my values were falling short and that they were starting to muddy up faster than I'm normally used to. And um, this is totally my fault. So I was using this purple color and I automatically assumed it was dioxazine violet because it's an every palette uh, PV23. It's a great dark transparent color that lends to rather dark mixtures. But in reality, I was mixing with a completely different pigment of PV16 manganese, manganese violet, I apologize, uh, not as intense as PV23. Like it has a much shorter value range. It's much more mild mid-tone, sometimes leaning light. So that was my first mistake because I tried to mix my shadows with that color and it just turned into gray. <laughs> um, I also didn't realize how opaque the yellow ochre was in this palette. Um, I'm kind of used to um, other yellow ochres from different more Asian brands where they're more transparent and I like using yellow ochre as a base for skin tones because it's a very, it's a mild uh, friendly color that yields rather non-abrasive mix, uh, mixes so it's kind of like a gentle a skin tone mixing color. So biggest lesson here, check your art supplies thoroughly before applying it to a serious illustration or a painting. It's cool to do a small little portrait study, but don't, don't frustrate and aggravate yourself by trying something new on something that's important. And I was super hyped about this painting. I really wanted to do this for my patron. I wanted to say like, hey, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for being a part of my community. Like, Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> Any useless. At some point in this painting, I knew that I had to stop and move on, that I had to do something else, that this was going nowhere. So I took the time, I re-swatched all the colors on the provided color charts, and I identified what were my cadmiums, which colors were opaque, which were semi-transparent and transparent, and just really slowed down and studied the art supplies. It was a long day today, and I didn't want to give up. I really wanted to end the day on a phenomenal note. So I tried to redeem myself with a mini study and use transparent pigments. Um, I really wanted like a luminous tone for this particular portrait study. Uh, so I reached for transparent may green and permanent carmine for the skin tones. And for the shadows, I reached for the phthalos and perlines. Actually, it's really nice that this set contains perlene maroon. Like. Yay! I, I don't use that color enough, but it I, I get wooed by it. So since I didn't have the best day in my sketchbook, I don't want to make any comments about the art supplies that I used because it was all user error. Like, I don't want to say that these art supplies are the bee's knees or that they suck. I will say that I do regret buying the 24 pans and I wish that I invested in single pants instead because there were some colors that I just don't have interest in and I felt the colors that I really wanted were not available in this set and um, for example I really wanted a transparent uh, warm red but instead I got like a opaque cadmium red light and I get it it makes sense it's a pre-made set uh, they tend to have these kind of colors um, I'm gonna link down a video from a dear friend Denise in liquid and color and she has a um, schmike, schmike? I believe a brand to brand video where she creates a limited color palette of all the colors available in the collection and the colors that she included in that video 
look amazing like i wish i had that instead of what i use today i think the paints are great they reactivate well they're super moist and i did find myself picking up a lot of pigment but i'm also not buying any art supplies at the moment i wish to be mindful for quite a bit um so yeah it was a day i look forward to tomorrow like i am very thankful that I did tackle this today that I gave these art supplies a chance that I finally allowed myself to use the good stuff and I really hope that this video kind of nudges you in that direction to reach for that art supplies that you tucked away in the corner for multiple reasons and that you too allow yourself to enjoy it. I certainly feel much more inclined to pick these up again and explore with them. Like I no longer feel like I'm going to destroy them. And I look forward to how these impact my whole art watercolor process. Okie dokie, time to wrap this up and say goodnight and recharge for a new day. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this series, please give this video the thumbs up and subscribe. Leave me a comment like what are you enjoying so far because it gives me helpful insight about what to create next. So until next time, have a marvelous day. Keep on drawing. Sending many good vibes. Bye!